Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I get to introduce my friend Janine Barkin, and I think you're going to really, really enjoy this podcast. She is an incredibly intelligent businesswoman, and I think that she does something that is very unique that a lot of people could learn from, and that she prepares business owners and businesses for sale. So, so to take them to kind of their end um, in their business. And it's just not something that I've heard about a lot in business. And I think that when you listen to her speak about it, it might, for those of you that are maybe coming along in your career or are building a business, you're going to take some really great nuggets out of it. So enjoy this podcast. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Janine, thank you for doing this interview. (laughs) I feel like it's been months to try to get on your calendar. (laughs) Yeah, I know it's been a while, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. So I would love it if you would talk about just your career, how you ended up. You What you do, I think, is very interesting. What was the progression to do what you do today? So out of college, I got a a job for a big accounting firm, Ernst & Young, and The funny story about that is that when I applied for the job, I didn't know what I was applying for. So it was a job in valuation services, and I really bumbled my way through those interviews and landed this job, which really was life-changing for me with my career. So I learned about valuation. I didn't really understand it when I started working, Um, but it gave me the foundation for what I'm doing today. So... I worked there for four or five years. Um, It was very interesting and fascinating. Did a lot of traveling, met with a lot of business owners, worked in different types of industries, valuing Mm -hmm. companies. And then I got married and had kids and decided to do the stay-at-home mom thing for a number of years. And so, you know, as kids start to get older, you start to get antsy. I did some nonprofit work for a while. My youngest son was diagnosed with autism when he was three. And so I got really involved in the Autism Society. Mm -hmm. And then through that, you know, kids are in school full time and you find yourself all of a sudden at home and with a lot of time on your hands. And so I ended up going back to work and working for an accounting firm. And through that job, um, met my future business partner at the time. I was working for him. And we went into consulting from there because we've always wanted to kind of get out of compliance and do consulting. And we were working with entrepreneurs on the move. We were helping startups and helping businesses grow and helping people get out of business. And at some point, we found a lot of success with that getting out of business. And we mm-hmm. became very fascinated with helping business owners prepare their businesses for sale um, with my valuation expertise and you know his uh, tax planning and strategic tax planning expertise. We really started to help businesses that have been working very hard for a number of years finally realize that finish line mm-hmm. and help them move on to the next chapter of life. And so recently, we, we our partnership split up. Or we went in different directions. We just had different things that we were doing in life. I really wanted to focus more on this type of consulting. And so I started my own firm in February. So I've been doing it on my own since then. And I've just been um, busier than ever. And it's been really fun. So... I think that um, you're starting with Ernst & Young. It's such an interesting thing because I've heard so many women that I've interviewed that somehow started there and then, you know, pivoted into these other things. Mm -hmm. The amount of work that they pour on you. Mm -hmm. Will you talk about that? Because I think um, our podcast, there's a lot of younger women that are looking at aspiring to six figures. And then we have kind of our counterparts that just kind of listen into our stories, right? But I I love for them to hear that path and how you navigated that. Mm -hmm. 
just, um, yeah, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and so I didn't really understand that big four concept or five mm-hmm. concept at the time. And I didn't, I wasn't a CPA, I'm not a CPA. So my route's a little non-traditional. It was in financial advisory services. And it, it was, you know, they throw you in very quickly. Yeah. That's one of those sink or swim things mm-hmm. where you either thrive in that environment or you don't. Um and it's not just the amount of work, it's the level of responsibility. So you're out of college, and I had a lot of work experience. So through high school and college, I worked for a construction firm in accounting and dealt with a lot of customers in different mm-hmm. you know, scenarios where I think that it was challenging for some that didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, they give you the, that client responsibility. They plop you right in front of a client and have you really start interacting. And either you're built for that or you're not. So they weed you out very early. I think they they do that on purpose. Mm-hmm. The workload, you know, is is, is a lot. Yeah. You know, and that was a very, I was a very hard job to leave when I decided to have a family. But I knew that I couldn't be a really good mom and also perform at that level. Yeah. Although there were women that were doing that. But their family life did ha- have consequences because of it. And so I decided that that was not the route for me mm-hmm. to continue. Do you think it prepared you for business ownership? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you work for a company like that and they, they give you that level of responsibility that early, it pre- you, you, there, there's a lot of self-starter type attributes that you have to develop mm-hmm. to survive. Mm-hmm. So your your requirements are you know, have so many billable hours and keep clients happy and work in teams. And if you can't do that, then you're out. And there's not a lot of extra training or support if that doesn't work for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I thrived in the environment. I really, really actually very much enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I found a way to work really smart and get a lot of work done and not work as many hours as my peers were working. Um, But... It's just my personality, I think. Yeah. I work really hard, but I try not to work very much. <laughs> <laughs> How did that play out in motherhood? <laughs> yeah, it didn't really uh, transfer very well. Because <laughs> you, have, you have to put the hours in. <laughs> so motherhood. Yes. You obviously were thrown a curveball in motherhood. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Will you talk a little bit about that? What did you learn I think you learn more about yourself than anything else. Um, as you, I mean, motherhood teaches you so much about yourself. Yes. Um, but yeah, you know, I found, you know, myself with, you know, I have two boys and they're 19 months apart. And my youngest one, between six months and a year, started having some developmental delays and started developing some quirks and issues, and they just kind of snowballed over time. So early diagnosis was difficult. I got a lot of, it's in your head, there's nothing wrong. It was very difficult to find him the help that he needed. Um, And then when we finally did, that was great. Because once you start to get, you know, the therapy and the help that you need, and the label isn't really as much of something that matters except for that you have access now to Mm -hmm. information and expertise that definitely helped put him on the path where he's at today. He just finished his first year of college. And Uh so that was quite an achievement and he's doing fantastic. Yeah, an achievement for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Did you want to go move in with him? (laughs) Yeah, he went away to college too. I mean, he's not living, he wasn't living in my house. He like moved (laughs) out, you know, in a lot of ways he's more independent than a lot of kids. Um, But also he does have a lot of the social challenges. And so just being in an environment that I wasn't, there to help control was very, you know, difficult. Mm-hmm. But he thrived and he did great. So he's going back next year. That's awesome. Yeah. So you went out on a limb and started your own business. I wouldn't really say went out on a limb because I feel like all of your clients followed you from they what did. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I know enough about you to know yeah. that. Yeah. And you're swamped already. Yeah. So how, how is that? How has that been for you? Was that scary? I think someone... 
from the outside looking in, so for example, I've known you not for a very long time, but from the outside looking in, you're so capable and you're so well respected that it's almost like, well, of course she did. She just <laughs> went and started a business and it's flourishing, right? Right. Did you question yourself at all? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, because it was very unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, the partnership split was not planned and I really felt that we would be in that relationship, in that partnership for till I retired. Mm -hmm. um, so when things were clear that that wasn't going to work, um, I really hesitated to move into forming a business. And I really said, I'm going to take a couple of months and I'm really just going to think through what I want to do. Like everything had been kind of, I don't know, the last 10 years kind of led from one thing to another. And I never had a chance to stop and think, well, is this really what I want to continue to do? Um, but I've been very passionate about what I do, and I feel like I've developed some things that are really helpful to people, and that if it, me withdrawing from the market, I kept hearing people say, well, who's going to help me now? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, why, why don't I want to move forward? So the question became, instead of let me think through this to make sure this is what I want to do, it became, why am I not doing it? Mm -hmm. Part of it, I think, was just being on your own. I think I'm a, I'm a collaborator. And so not having the collaboration with a partner felt unnatural to me. Mm -hmm. And so I've found a way to fill that void by collaborating with other professionals. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still getting that collaboration. Um, it's just in a different way. Mm -hmm. So... So will you explain what you do? Because obviously <laughs> part of this is yes. I would like for people to understand your business and what you do. Yeah. So um, I, it's very much like real estate. I Just like you would put your house on the market, I help prepare businesses and business owners for a sale or a transition. So I help figure out the valuation. Um, I also look at what would be a good exit option for them to meet their goals, make sure that they're prepared. Uh, one of the things I base my business on is that statistically 70% of business owners are, regret the way their business transitions because mm -hmm. they find out something after that had they known before, they would have made a different decision. Not that they wouldn't have sold the business. Mm -hmm. So I am I see my job as getting the information that I know they need, maybe the questions they don't know to ask, mm -hmm. and help facilitating that conversation and that education. Mm -hmm. So that when we do have a transition or a transaction, they're prepared and they know how to make good decisions. Business owners make decisions all the time. As long as they have the right information, they will make good decisions for themselves. Mm -hmm. So I can be a sounding board, but I'm really mostly just providing them the information that they need. But just like you compared it to real estate, which is, I think, interesting because it's probably as or more emotional yes. of a Definitely. transaction than real estate, yes. right? Because, I mean, for... I know for me, your business is, becomes a child. Absolutely. I mean, it really is. It takes so much time and blood and sweat and tears. And so how do you help them manage that? I would say that even to add to what you say, it's an identity issue. Mm, you know, you become yeah. very wrapped up in, I, I, in, I built this business. I'm this business owner. This is who I am in the community. And you might have been doing it for 20, 30 years. And then who are you after that? Mm -hmm. And those are very emotional decisions. I say a lot of times the math is easy, which I know it, it probably isn't to everybody, but it's the psychology that's hard. And the uncertain, if I can take the uncertainty out of the process, then that calms a lot of that down. So when we're in a fearful state, it's hard to make decisions. Mm -hmm. um, moving through this process, people are either pushed through it because they have like health issues maybe, or they have a spouse that wants them to retire, or there's some sort of event or thing happening in their life, or they have pull factors, which is they are looking to start something new, they're ready to close a chapter, it's a little bit more positive. Mm -hmm. So those things definitely determine how people deal with the emotional part of transitioning mm -hmm. um, through selling the business. Um, but the more prepared you are and the more that you know, um, the better people get through it. And the mo once they start gathering information, the process becomes easier. It's the starting that's hard. It's That's, the I think, the emotional part. Mm -hmm. 
probably like selling a ch childhood home or something, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it, it can be very, very emotional. And people handle uncertainty differently. Yeah, Boy, so. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of the questions that I always ask my guests is, do you remember when you achieved six figures and did it have an emotional impact on you? For you, I'm sure it was in your first career. Yeah, it was in my first career and mm -hmm. it definitely had an emotional impact on me. It was surprising to me at the time because it was such a big leap in salary. Mm -hmm. I think they were, they knew I was getting married and thinking of having a family and I think they were really trying to keep me. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it was a national firm and so it was, I was the second promoted manager in the country at the time for my group that mm -hmm. was in several offices. I was floored when they told, I mean, I didn't believe them. I had to call them back because they couldn't, we were, our schedules were so weird with traveling and be like, I think I heard you wrong. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I really, um, you know, was, was surprised that mm -hmm. I had achieved so much so quickly, but also I had already made the decision that I was um, probably going to be at the end of the year moving into mm -hmm. having children and um, leaving that career. So left on a high note. <laughs> yeah. Probably a lot of validation. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And then is there a book or podcast that you tend to recommend a lot to people? Um, I love the book, The Alchemist mm -hmm. by pa Paulo Coelho, mm -hmm. um, because I think that's what we're all doing in life and business is really trying to figure out what our destiny is or what we're here to achieve. And so I think it's very relatable to wherever you're at in your life, mm -hmm. whether you're looking to find comfort that you're on the right path or you're looking to make a change. It's very self-reflective. Re mm -hmm. And um, I feel like there's like a lot of really great quotes in there. Um, one of the ones that I think is really powerful is they say that your blessings, if not fully used, can become your curse. Mm. and that there's nothing more important than figuring out what your destiny is. And I think that goes hand in hand. We're all here. We all have talents, mm -hmm. and it's what we do with them. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> so last question. Okay. Um, I didn't – I'm sure that there are questions that I haven't asked you. You have so much wisdom, and obviously when it comes to business and life, but – we have so many listeners that are aspiring to six figures, whether they have a business or they're in the corporate mm -hmm. environment and that's, you know, where they want to be. What didn't I ask you that you think, oh, this would be a good nugget of wisdom or a good little bullet point for someone to take and apply or take and really think about and digest? I think that is my mom that gave me this advice. I think that you can't, you take a step every day or as many as you can every day. And if you keep moving forward, you'll turn around and you'll have got a mile. And that'll give you confidence. And then you keep going. So I think a lot of times we overthink how to start something or how to begin like a business or, you know, can I do it? And it's just the action and the movement of doing it where the magic happens. And we can over plan and over analyze things to death. And I've seen people do that. I know people that have been looking to buy a business for two or three years and they come around all the time and they look at the businesses that I have and they never write a check because it's not perfect. So they've never really gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think my advice would be to people if they, if they really want to do something, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter how fast you go. And it really doesn't matter how much you accomplish every day as long as you're doing something to move forward because you will build on that and that momentum will hit you and it hits people differently. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Yeah.